Hello, this is Malorian, and this is going to be a 2500 point game with my Bretonians against some Skaven. So this again is one of my interesting missions that I run for the, the tournaments that I do. Uh, this is the tournament that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. We're just kind of play testing it, and it's called Magic in a Bottle. And the main premise behind it is that you're going to a place where there's no winds of magic, so you need to bring your own bottles that your mages have put magic into beforehand. So basically going into it, you're going to have six power dice bottles and six d dispel dice bottles, and you need to decide which one you're going to use each magic phase. You know, the, the magic dice ones are like uh, 12, 10, 8, 6, and like, you know, uh, 4, whatever. You know, it's kind of staggers down, so you have to make kind of dis decisions, decisions of which one you're going to use depending where you are in the game. And then after you pick that, your opponent's going to pick which dispel dice uh, potion he's going to use. Uh, anyway, during while you're doing all this, there's five main objectives you're trying to get. One, you're trying to be have be the player that casts the most spells during the game. Two, you want to be the player that dispels the most spells during the game. Three, you want your caster to stay alive the entire game. Four, you want you to get one unit to be in the deployment zone of your opponent at the end of the game. And four, you want to control the watchtower at the end of the game, which obviously will be impossible for me. Uh, anyway, looking at this, uh, we deploy on the short port edge, two feet out, and for my part, I have a unit of my uh, Pegasus Knights that already have a vanguarded up. I have nine Questing Knights, then I have 15 Knights Errant, then I have 12 Knights of the Realm, then I have 10 Knights of the Realm, but in there is my BSB and my Damsel, which is my General, then 15 Knight Errant. Uh, nine questing knights and then another ten knights of the realm but these guys have the flaming banner and of the two knights errant the one on the right have the errantry banner for my opponent he has a horde of plague monks on the left then fifty slaves fifty clan rats fifty clan rats behind them is the bunker that has the gray seeker and bsb then he has a horde of the storm of vermin two warp lightning cannons behind them uh, 50 slaves in the far right, and then there's an engineer with a doom rocket. Then he has his uh, doom wheel and HPA in the back. For terrain, uh, bottom right, that thing is that magic circle. Uh, the one that's the vortex grenade, that's the uh, sorceress portal, so doing spells at us. That's the watchtower in the center. Far left, we have a black building, and the 40k ish one is that Acropolis of Heroes. And then at the top, you know, he has a fence there, and also that's the Shrine of Sigmar, which doesn't really matter because he has no ward saves in his list. So, anyway, I pray he has first turn, and uh, really, for all the magical stuff looking forward to this game, he definitely has a big advantage in casting because he has a level 4 and a level 2 against my 1 level 2, but we'll see how things go. So, Skaven turn 1, they don't really do very much. They kind of scuttle up uh, a little bit, not too much there. Uh, he wasn't happy what happened with the Doom Wheel because it moved up and then got blasted by the portal to be plus one or minus one strength and toughness. So now, if I can hit it with that one lance, that could be pretty good. Anyway, uh, his magic was pretty much a bust. I mean, he got a few spells off that he just kind of cast just for fun. So I think he is a ahead of that. But otherwise, it was mainly his warp lightning cannons that did the the real bulk of the damage that killed a few uh, Knights Errant, but mainly killed a whole bunch of my Knights of the Realm in the middle of the unit, so some big damage there. So my turn one, I try and charge with my unit on the right. I needed an 8, didn't get it, so failed that charge. Uh, everything else is kind of moving up to be about 15 inches away, so I can try and charge next turn. And my Pegasus Knights you know, I didn't really know what to do with him because he didn't move up far enough so I could get behind his lines. So they just kind of hid behind the watchtower so that next turn if he moves up, then I can boost behind him. You know, obviously he wants that watchtower, so I'm expecting him to be pushing ahead to take it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Either way, uh, in the magic phase, I go and I get one spell off. I, I make it so that the unit that she's in... Uh, she only has two spells, by the way. She is uh, Laura Life, she has Dwellers, and she has the Shield of Thorns. And so right now, they have the Shield of Thorns. So that's one so far, but I think now it costs one spell to his three. So, I mean, obviously he's pushing far ahead in that one. All right, his turn two was pretty crazy. Doomwheel went forward, didn't quite make it to me, blasted a few of my guys. The HPA actually rolled three ones and then went off in a random direction there to the, the board edge. Uh, his 
one unit in the center moved up so it could take the watchtower next turn, well, everything actually edged back. So, you know, now I can't really charge. I'll have to go through more shooting. Uh, a lot of his shooting and stuff just blasted that middle unit of mine uh, just down to the, the, the BSB and the champ. And actually, when that hit, uh, the second shot, I actually had to take a hit on my uh, BSB, but luckily he rolled a 1 to wound. And then finally, one of the neat things he did is in his magic phase, he did crack call. Because, you know, I was all in the nice little line there with my Pegasus Knights and my BSB. But in the end, it only got far enough to go through killing some of his uh, clan rats and then destroyed the building. And then it took some warp lightning to go and kill the, the one guy that you see missing. So for me, you know, I love it because I wasn't going to take that watchtower anyway. And now that opens me up for some more charges. So... In the end, it just turned out to be a bonus to me. And then in my turn, this was pretty huge. I, I charge up with both these units. Of course, now that the watchtower is gone, I don't need to just completely kill, clip. I can get in there with uh, at least two guys on each side. I lost a few with going through the dangerous terrain. But anyway, you know, I thought, well, he's going to be steadfast, but at least I'll bring him up and I can counter with other units. Well, that wasn't really needed because I got off my dwellers and I killed off, you know, half that unit. So now I don't have to really worry about him being steadfast. Unfortunately, it was with a miscast, so with that, I lost one magic level and forgot that spell, but whatever, right? I'm just happy to get that one off so I can break through these guys. And then in the end, it looks like this. Uh, my unit on the right in the questing knights had hit the, what do you call it, the uh, doom wheel there, destroyed it, and then the questing knights overran into those slaves there. Uh, one of the magic things that went on them is their minus one armor save for the entire game. I had defeated that one unit in the center, and so now the one went and clipped the storm vermin, and the other one was able to hit the other unit. Now you see my BSB is all by himself, and my reasoning for when I first did that is that I didn't actually expect me to break through them, right? So of course his warp lightning cannons couldn't actually hit me because they'd probably have to start at on my knights, and so it'd be very difficult to hit him. Yeah, now he's standing out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, luckily, though, my Pegasus Knights had enough room to sneak in back there so he can start charging. And then on the far left, I'm just edging up again to try and get some charges off later. And in case you're wondering about me having to take my uh, impetuous test and all those things, I was able to pass it throughout the entire game. Now, this here is something that's going to really change the course of the game. Uh, during his turn, now he decides that he's going to skitter leap his Grace here all the way back to this building that was in the back of my deployment zone here and you know really objective wise this is a really smart move because now he's going to be keeping this guy alive and he's going to have a guy in my deployment zone so two things there of course what that also means is that he doesn't have that good leadership for all of his lines so we'll see how that works out and as you can see here uh, it had some disastrous effects now he tried going in and shooting my BSB let's start with that the one warp lightning cannon rolled a misfire and kind of shot backwards. The other one, uh, you know, started off fine, but then rolled a misfire at the end, so it did nothing as well. So my BSB was completely fine. Uh, there on the right, the HBA had hit into my questing knights, destroyed them, and actually the, the one remaining knight that used to be with my BSB, I had thrown up to try and maybe slow down the storm vermin. Well, it turned out that if it wasn't for him standing there, that HPA would have overran into the flank of my knights. That didn't happen. Uh, I was able to beat his storm vermin, and as it worked out, you know, he, he failed his stubborn test and broke and got away, but now I'm in there with his, his uh, bunker. I also beat his clan rats on the left, and again, I mean, if he would have had his uh, general there, he would have passed, but now they're, they're fleeing. But again, at least they got away. Uh, otherwise... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, his, his two units on the left, both his monks and his uh, slaves are, are both frenzied because he death frenzied the slaves, and they both failed charges to go up. So now, finally, I'll be able to charge over there. So, my turn three, I've been looking forward to do this, the, the whole game type thing. You know, I had this flaming banner. I've never been able to bring to bear a flaming banner on a regen monster, so I'm really looking forward to see how this works out. And, yeah, it didn't quite work, so... Uh, in there, he got the one was like the avalanche or whatever. So one where just like three d six hits, but the main thing is I'm going to be now minus one to hit. And in the end, I managed to do four wounds to him, but he's stubborn. He held, and now he kind of turned to face me. 
Uh, the Pegasus Knights destroy one Warp Lightning Cannon, overrun into the other one. I beat the Bunker, beat it, overrun, hit into the Storm Vermin, so that kills them. And then my other Knights charge the fleeing Clan Rats that are over there, caught them, destroyed them. And oh man, this was embarrassing. I double charge my Questing Knights and my big huge Knight Errant unit into the Monks. They activate their banner so they can re-roll the hit, re-roll the wound. Now, in good old Aeth, he gets to go first because he has a bigger initiative. <laughs> Almost completely annihilates the questing knights. Kills a whole bunch of my knights. Errant, I think in the end I killed something like three or four of him. I really fluffed my attacks. And then, yeah, I, then I broke with both units, of course. And so, luckily, I guess he didn't catch me. But, man, you would think that when you double charge a unit with your, your knights that you'd win. But in this one, just didn't really work out. So this turn four, he had his slaves that joined in with the HPA. That meant that with all that combat res, I uh, broke with both units, and he ro ro uh, ran down both of my guys. So both of those units gone. He charged my one last questing knight on the left. He got away. Uh, my Pegasus knights went and destroyed the war last warp lightning cannon, and then. Combat reformed looked at the Gracier. And you're probably asking, what Gracier? <laughs> you know, wasn't he safe on the other side? At this point, basically, my brother felt like, at, during the magic phase anyway, that he was being crushed. And so he just kind of wanted to more goof around because who cares, right? This is a play test for a tournament mission, but at this point, it didn't really matter. Uh, in fact, I had had another miscast as well before, so I had lost my other magic level. And so, of course, he's going to get no dispels during the game. That's gone. It was pretty much looking to be a 3-3 tie no matter what. So he just had some fun. Uh, Skitter leaped over here, cracked call, threw my guys, didn't do anything, and now it looks like he's going to be taking a charge. And so that's what I do. These guys charge in, and, I mean, he can issue a challenge, but it doesn't look too good for the Gracier. But as luck would have it, he got away. Um, I just left all my attacks. I think maybe I did one wound from the challenge. And then after he got away, I ran all of like two or three inches and he managed to just barely stay on the board edge. So now, you know, if next turn he rallies, he can skitter leap, skitter leap to, to wherever he wants and then it kind of just got away scot-free. Otherwise, at the end of my turn four, you can see it looks like this. My one questing knight rallied, just waiting to take on whatever. Uh, other units just kind of turned around, and that's all that's really happening right now. Skaven turn five. The Gracier did not rally, so he ran off the board. So, so much for that. Uh, his HBA starts coming towards me. His other guys, uh, well, the, the monks turned around. The slaves charged my guy, killed him, and then also combat reformed to turn around. So it looks like I'll get one last charge on that HPA. My turn five. I dual charge into HBA, kill him. The one combat reforms look over here. The other one uh, overran far enough actually to hit into the side of these slaves. And right now they're actually crazy boosted up because with all the things they've been having from the magic, they're you know got plus one uh, strength and toughness and their weapon skill ten and uh, uh, initiative ten and all this stuff. But even then, I mean, they're not gonna have a a good chance of holding. And then what was going on with those Pegasus Knights is that, well, one, I was putting them in a spot where they could try and assassinate the Engineer because he's still alive, and two, he's still holding that one objective of the, being in their deployment zone. And now this was fun. So on his turn six, uh, my damsel goes up, issues a challenge, you know, takes it with his Engineer, and this is kind of just, you know, for fun type thing. And a nice epic fa uh, fashion, you know, he does one wound to me, and bam, I have two attacks, one from the damsel, one from the horse, both hit, both wound, boom, <laughs> win the challenge. So end of his turn looks like this, you know, I beat the one slaves on the right, ran them down, and the slaves on the left, well I guess I guess didn't run them down, they exploded. Uh, the slaves on the left actually made this huge long bomb charge to, to hit into these knights here. But, you know, they did nothing to me, I killed like six back with, you know, all those attacks, and then I just kind of combat reform to get one more guy up there, but they actually held. And then, you know, my last turn, beat the slaves again, they explode, and there you have it. So, at the end of the game, it was a victory to the Bretonians, kind of. You know, if you look at the objectives, it was 3-1, to one, but really that's just because he was goofing around. I mean, it should have ended 3-3 three to three tie. 
Uh, if you look at what was killed, you know, again, it was probably a win for the Bretonians, so whatever way you want to look at it. But anyway, it was just a fun game. Uh, him testing out his tournament uh, Skaven, me giving another run to my Bretonians. You know, i got to give those orcs a break now and then, don't I? And uh, so it was just a lot of fun. So hope you liked watching it.